So you're welcome back. We've had uh, quite an interesting 20 minutes or so yeah. with our spiritual therapist, Excel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we've listened to him on how spouses can uh, effectively communicate with each other and how they can ensure marital disagreements do not affect the way they speak to their children. How do they ensure their children understand what is communicated and a lot more. Hmm. And um, we just ended at a point where we're transiting now to someone who is a specialist with um, the issues of dealing with um, young adults. Um, Eniola Olajobi is the chief executive officer of Brainy Educare. She's a child psychologist. Eniola, hello and welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you on the show with Hello. us this morning. How are thank you, Eniola? Thank you, Eileen and John. Good to be here. Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. As a child psychologist, and um, we're talking about communication, effective communication in the home, and trying to avoid a breakdown in communication. How do we ensure that the younger ones are carried along? Okay, thank you very much, Helen, for that question. Um, so basically, um, communication is a two-way thing. And as parents, we must realize that communication starts from day one. And when I say day one, what do I mean? I do not even mean the day of birth. I mean the day the child is conceived. So re research has shown that even the fetus in the tummy is able to communicate and we are able to communicate with them. So what this means is that when the child is, you know, out and alive, even right from infancy, we begin to have conversations with them and we begin to read body language because communication is not just verbal. Okay. Communication is simply passing of information. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, includes the nonverbal. This includes the body language, even the tone of the voice. And of course, the gestures. So all of those things are the things that parents must put into consideration when communicating with children. And of course, as they grow older, it tends to become a bit tougher um, because of the differences in age and usually orientation. And that's when parents need to, um, would I say, relearn the skills of communicating with preteens and teenagers because they tend to think in a way that's slightly different than the way their parents think. So it's important as parents to keep up in our game and ensuring that we are able to communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. Because too many times, indeed, we are communicating. But the question to ask is, how well? How effective? And is this really making a difference? Mm -hmm. Because too many times, mm -hmm. we are listening to what they're saying. What about what they are not Same. saying? And that we can only get it out of them if we take our time to observe the body language and other things around the verbal information that they're passing across to us. That's so, very interesting, so John. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Aniola. That's very interesting, John. Their world is entirely different from ours. Yes, it is. Their language is entirely different from ours. Mm. Their needs are entirely different from ours. And uh, for us, we are relearning and we're learning on the job. So um, how, do we, how do we get along you know, this path? Because it looks like every day you know, something new would in, uh, unfold yeah. you know, concerning how they are receiving our messages and all of that. We need to be, as parents, we need to be better structured or better prepared for the challenges as they unfold. Do you have any advice for us, Eniola? <laughs> Um, thank you, John. The first advice I would say is that we need to um, come to the realization that you've just said, that is, that we need to learn, we need to agree, and then we need to be willing to learn. I feel like too many parents feel that they know it all. We believe that because we're older, we, we're perfect, and there's no room for improvement. So the first path is for us to agree that we need to relearn and possibly unlearn some things that we had learned before now, and then that willingness to learn 
And then, of course, paying attention to the lead that will teach us. Because, again, communication, as much as we have general rules of communication, we would also need specifics to deal with specific children across different personalities mm -hmm. and across different age groups. Okay. Um, that brings me to the next um, area of concern. You know, sometimes you feel that you're doing your very best. Sometimes you feel that, um, why is it almost impossible for this child to see where I'm coming from? All right? Now, so it's probably about presentation. Um, what is the format, if, if I can ask that question? What is the format of, you know, presenting a case, for example, to the young adults or the teenagers so that they can see your true intention and the love with which you're probably presenting a particular um, case to them? OK, thank you. Um, so there's no fixed format per se, but there's some basic things we have to um, have in mind. The first one is we need to understand the need to talk with our children, especially the young adults, the teenagers, not talk at them. A lot of times, parents tend to talk at. So there's this authority figure, I'm your mom or I'm your dad, and you will do as I say. But when we understand that there's no war and there's no power to assume, we should learn how to talk with them, to um, you know have a kind of a conversation with them, feel their pulse, and get their opinion. So it's possible for me to tell my teenage child that I want him or her to do this, but in a way that, feel, that they feel that they also have um, an opportunity to make an input or to make a choice. So we can help young adults to learn how to make choices within a limited um, amount of uh, choices that we're giving them, rather than just telling them, this is what you must do, and not getting their own opinion. So basically, it's about carrying them along and asking them what they feel about what, we, what we've just discussed. So if it's an instruction, for example, you still want to get a feedback. And the fact that you're getting a feedback doesn't mean that you're indulging them. It's okay for you to get a feedback and explain further. Sometimes the feedback helps you to understand how they feel about what you just said. And you may need to explain further why do you think that's what they should do. Because if they do not understand why we want them to do what, then they're, they're not going to do it when we're not there. So it's important to carry them along and make their opinions um, um, valid. Just Val to yeah. Hear the, them out and yeah. then allow them to thank speak you. out their minds. Th thank you. Thank you, Inola. I, I would like to quickly ask uh, a, a question that has uh, been bothering me for a while. And it's a good thing we have someone like you on the show today. I know that a lot of families are going through... Um, crisis in terms of uh, there's a particular age bracket it's the teen age you know <laughs> where children or these young adults go through what you call teenage blues they totally shut down shut up shut out and it's very difficult to get through to them could you just how do we manage tell that? us yeah how do we manage teenage blues Okay, um, managing the teenage blues should start even before the teenage years. And um, given the situation that we're currently going through globally, and I'm referring to the pandemic, this has made children more vulnerable than ever before. So we're not just looking out for the teenagers, we're looking out for the preteens as well. So as mm -hmm. early as age eight, we want to start having conversations with our children and these are conversations away from those breakfast tables or just hello, hi, how was school today? We're talking about letting the children know that it's okay to knock on the door and say, mommy, we need to talk. Daddy, we need to talk. And it has to be just you and I, because mm. this is going to be a very serious, hard, hard conversation. When children have this kind of foundation, when the turbulent years come, they would usually want to shut out, like you said, and most times when you say what's wrong, they say nothing. Mm -hmm. But just like a highball to highball, but I know you know, uh, but you know I know there's something wrong. Something as short as that could help your teenager to open out better. So that's on one side. But on the other side, and in a situation where 
we haven't been doing this before and now they're teenagers already and they're sort of shorting out and we want to help them, basically the first thing we need to do is to give them space. I know that sounds like contradictory to what we expect, but the space is the very thing that they need from us first. Too many times we're all over them, you can't be in your room alone, you have to come out and be a part of the family. Again, mm. we're talking at them and we're mm. lashing out. Mm. So we're disconnecting more and more. We need to give them mm. that space where they get this, um, this help, hey, what's going on? And it gives them an opportunity for some introspection and then we come in in a very subtle manner. At that stage, more like a friend than, um, than a, an authority or like, you know, somebody who's above them. To say, is there something that you would like to discuss? Do you feel comfortable enough to have a conversation with me about certain things? I see you've been keeping to yourself a lot. And sometimes we can even offer that we did like to speak to someone else. Mm. Because sometimes they mm. may just want to talk, but for whatever reason, or because of the previous um, relationship, they don't feel comfortable enough to, you. to talk to you. And I think that's something yeah. that parents need to come to terms with. Okay. It's Thank okay you. for your teenager not to want to talk to you. Yeah. There is an, uh, another trusted adult that you can refer them to. Mm. Please do so, and that adult can encourage mm. them, come back to you, or mm. that adult can now come in, um, come in mm. to help Iron things out. Iron, iron things, things out. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Anyola. Thank you so much. You've been such a huge help on the show this morning um, because these are very, very key areas that are, you know, a lot of parents, a lot of families are experiencing a lot of the things that we have shared by, um, earlier on on this show. Thank you once again for joining us. And um, we hope that when we do knock at your door again, you will um, find the time to come on the show again because there's still so much so much ground to cover john yes absolutely thank you thank so you. much Eniela Olajobi, ceo brainy educare it's been a pleasure having you on the show thank you okay we'll take um another break and um on the show because we're talking family it's not about the adults alone so the young adults and the teenagers are ready to tell us where it is that we go wrong as parents. And Pharaoh has with her three um, smart young teenagers who will be discussing communication differences and challenges between teenagers and adults. Pharaoh, where are you? I am so interested in what these young children will have to say. Over to you, Pharaoh. 